CT Help is a customizable Swift Package Manager solution for Swift UI. Each one of your screen views can have its own set of help cards. You can also optionally include a card that links to your website and one that will initiate an email to whichever address you specify. This version uses the new page index view style for tab views and thus requires iOS 14 or later and Xcode 12 or later to implement. The best way to learn how to implement CT Help is by way of example. This is a sample application that I created for recording books that I've read. You can download it from the link provided in the description below. When the app launches, it loads three sample books. Tapping on the book will display the book detail where you can edit the title, author, and any notes you may have. You can tap on the plus button on the navigation bar to initiate a new entry. And the data is saved to a user default using the new app storage capability of iOS 14, so that on the next launch, your saved and edited books will be displayed. You can remove a book by swiping from the right to the left. Again, the updated collection is stored in user defaults. I've tried to keep the code simple and clean using the MVVM design pattern. All functions for adding, deleting, retrieving, and storing books are in the books view model file. I'll leave it up to you to explore the code. That's not the purpose of this video. What I want to do is to provide help to my users by giving them the opportunity to tap on a help button to display a scrolling list of cards that will provide information about the functionality of each screen. And this is what CT Help is for. The first thing you need to do is to install CT Help using Swift Package Manager. From within Xcode 12 or later, choose File, Swift Packages, Add Package Dependency. At the next screen, enter github.com slash stuartlynch slash cthelp underscore swiftui when you're asked to choose a package repository. Choose the latest available version and add the package to your target. Once added, you can see all the files that are added to the framework here. Feel free to take a look at how cthelp was implemented. You can create a set of CT Help cards for every different view. In the Assets folder, you'll see that I've already added a number of images that I'm going to use on my help cards. Each image has both a light and dark mode version and reflect the text that will be on the card. To help you manage that content, it's highly recommended that you follow these suggestions following. The first thing I do is create a new helper Swift file. You can give it any name, but I like to call mine CT Help Builder. The first thing you need to do is import CT Help, and this will add the CT Help framework that you just added to make it accessible to this file. Next, create an enum or struct called CT Help Builder, which we'll use to create a static function to help us build our help card items. Inside this enum, I'll create another enum called page and create a case for each of the views for which I'll be creating a set of help cards. In my case, I have three views, so my cases will be the same names as my views, only lower cased, as is practice for cases on an enum. Next, create a static function called getHelpItems that will accept a page as an argument and will return a CT help object. In the body of the function, create an instance of CT help and assign it to the constant CT help, and then return it. Next, create a switch block for each of the page enums. We can let Xcode generate all of the cases for us. With the builder page created, each of the switch blocks are where you create an array of your CT help item cards. A CT help item has three string properties, title, help text, and image name. If the string is not empty, there must be an image in your asset catalog with that name. If it is left as an empty string, no image will appear on the card. Note though that images must be created with dimensions that will fit within the help card. The default dimensions of the card are 300 by 285, but these can be changed as you'll see later. 
The images won't scale and will exceed the boundaries of the card if they are too large. The help text field will scroll, but the maximum height for your image should only be used if you have no help text, otherwise the help text may not be visible. You use the CT Help New function to add a CT item to the array of cards. In our first card, I'll have a title called My Books and just display the image My Books logo. For the second card, I'm going to have text only, so the image name will be left as an empty string. The title will be list of books, and for the help text, I'll describe what the list of books is. If help text is particularly long, it will scroll within the available space in the card. You can use swift multi-line strings surrounding your text with triple quotes to create line breaks. The third card will have both an image and text, so I have to make sure that my image will fit within the card, so remember that when you're creating your images. For the other two views, I'm going to have a single card on each initially. Each will have some text and an image. There are more options available for cards and customizations that are covered later. But before you do that, you should test by implementing CT Help on your views. Within the screen that you want to implement CT Help, before the body, create an instance of CT Help that will call the static get help functions using the corresponding page enum value for that argument. Next, create an add state variable that will be toggled whenever you want to show or dismiss CT help. I'll call it show CT help and initialize it as false. Now I want to add a button on the top right of my navigation bar that will toggle the state and present the help cards. I already have a button there, so I will first embed it in an H stack and create a spacing of 25. And now I'll just copy and paste to add a new button using the question mark dot circle dot fill as the SF image name. For the action, I want to set show CT help to be true, and I want to do that with animation so that it'll transition nicely to the help screen. Now CT help will be displayed as an overlay view on top of your existing screen views. And this is done by embedding your content inside a Z stack. As the last view of the Z stack, before the closing Z stack bracket, conditionally add the cards to call the CT help show CT help screens function. We can pass in the binding to show CT help state variable and your instance of CT help as arguments. This will conditionally overlay your help cards only when show CT help is set to true. In book detail, First, create the instance of CT Help, retrieving the help items for the page book detail. And we'll create that at state instance of show CT Help, setting it to false. For the navbar button, I need to first add a toolbar, and then within the toolbar, add a toolbar item with a placement of navigation bar trailing. And here is where I can add my button as before to toggle show CT help within the animation block using the same image as before for my button. Then we'll embed our form in a Z stack. And then as the last item, we'll conditionally call the show CT help screens function with the same show CT help and CT help arguments. The process is the same for new book. Create the instance of CT help, retrieving the help items for the page new book. Create the at state variable, show CT help, setting it to false. Embed our existing trailing button in an H stack, giving some spacing of 25. 
and then create a button that will set show CT help to true and use that question mark dot circle dot fill image as the button. Again, we'll embed the whole form inside a Z stack. And then as the last item in the Z stack, we'll conditionally show CT help screens. Let's test on the simulator. As you can see, our help screens are displaying on each of my three views. There are two optional cards that may be included by calling the append defaults function to your instance of CT help. You can add them to all screens or some. I'm going to add them to all, so I'll do this outside of my switch block before I return CT help. One of the options I have is the ability to let users choose to send along data in support emails. I do this by creating a JSON representation of all of the data so that I can load it into my development environment should there be any issues. In Books View Model in this application, there is a function that will retrieve all books, and I can use that then, because it's codable, to encode it to a variable that I will call book data, and I can use that when I create my email card, as you'll see. So the append defaults function takes five parameters, company name, email address, data, website, and company image name. The company name should always be entered. If you assign a non-nil value to email address, a new card will be created and presented asking the users if he or she wishes to contact the developer. The email address specified will be the address to which the email is sent. If, prior to calling the append defaults function, you gather data for your application and assign it to a data object, you can assign that to the data parameter, and that's what we just did. So if this parameter is not nil, the user will be asked if he or she would like to attach application data to the email. That's their choice. If you assign a non-nil value to website, a card is displayed with an image using the name specified in the company image name, along with some text that asks the user to click on a button that will take the user to the company website defined in the website address. The image that you specify must be available as one of your assets. Let's test this out on a real device. Here's my iPhone. After the three cards we saw earlier, I get the Visit Website card that, when tapped, takes me to the specified site. The Contact Developer card has a button to initiate an email, and, as you see, it asks if I want to attach application data. If I do, it initiates a new email and attaches the data. These two cards are at the end of each of my sets of CT Help screens. There are two additional types of customizations that you can do when creating your instance of CT Help. All of the strings used in CT Help are fully customizable and all are optional so you don't need to change every one of them. To customize the strings, just create a new instance of CT String and provide a string value for one or more of the optional parameters. Here's what you can change. I'm just going to alter the contact title and contact help text. Now you can assign that to the CT help CT string property. CT help's default colors are all optional as well and are compatible with and support dark mode in iOS 14. This is important to note as you will want to ensure that any custom colors that you use have both a light and a dark asset available. In the starter project, you see that I have a custom color named Help Primary Color. 
Here are all of the options that you can change. I'm just going to change the title and help text colors. You'll have to change the import from Foundation to UI Kit to get access to the UI color. You just create a new instance of CT colors and complete one or more of the optional parameters. Now you can assign this to the CT colors property of the CT help instance. Now one last thing. By default, the dimensions of the help card are 300 by 285. You can change this when you create your instance of CT help. For example, if you have a lot of tall images or lengthy help text, you may want to adjust the height. Just make sure that you test your adjusted dimensions on all devices in both portrait and landscape mode, as well as in split mode on an iPad or regular width class size on iOS. One more test now. As you can see, our card is much taller, and the title and help text has changed to that new blue color. And it looks good in dark mode too. Notice also that this button is inaccessible because I'm running in the simulator and not in my device. Also, in case you're wondering, this works for iPads as well or any device in split screen. The help screens will be presented over the current view. I hope you'll take advantage of this Swift package and add it to your projects. Thanks for watching.